Hey guys, it's Audrey from Penned Inklings, and I'm so excited this year to be a camp counselor for Crafty Camp 2019. I hope you guys are enjoying camp. Did you guys like last week the I Heart Lettering? That was really my favorite. I learned quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create some really unique Happy Mail while also keeping it really flat to make sure that you don't have to spend a lot of money on postage, but while also at the same time using all of your craft supplies, making sure that it's cost effective, and also making it just really cool and having that wow factor so that whenever your pen pal receives it, it really makes their day. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first envelope that we're gonna make today is this one here. And we're gonna use the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. Now this one's really great because you can actually figure out maybe the size of paper that you want to fit into your envelope or even if you have a card that's pre-made. It'll tell you what size you need to cut down your paper to and where you need to place it in the board so that you can score it. Now my favorite size to make is four by six and I occasionally make a five by seven, but today we're gonna do a four by six. So I need to cut down my paper to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna start here with a piece of 12 by 12 paper. We're gonna line it up and trim it down. Once we've got the paper to the size that we need it to be, we're going to line it up at our score mark, which is three and three eighths. Line it up there, and we're going to punch and score. We're going to line up our score mark again, punch, score, punch, and score. One more time and punch and score. Okay, leaves us with this. Now, with the We Are Memory Keepers punch board, it also has a punch on the inside here so that you can actually round the corners. I only round one of my corners. So I'm gonna do that now. And the corner that I round is actually going to be the flap that closes your envelope and I'll show you why I only round that corner. Once you fold your side pieces in, these side corners here don't really get seen once you close up your envelope. And you might be thinking, well, why doesn't she round the bottom corner of that flap? Well, because I'm actually going to cut this off. I like my envelope to look more like a standard envelope that you would get in a store. And so a really easy way to do that is you're going to close up your envelope like this before you glue it down. You're gonna line up your scissors where the bottom flap and the side flap meets. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side so that your scissors kind of poke out just a little bit. And then cut. All right, now it's not perfect. <laughs> so what you can do is you can go back and cut again. All right, until you get it how you like it, okay? And that looks more like a standard envelope that you'd buy from the store. Now, when it comes to adhesives, I always recommend using some wet glue unless you have a tape runner that is an extreme adhesive. So the Tombow Extreme tape runner is great for this. It will hold, but what I found is that other tape runners tend to kind of disintegrate over time and come apart in the mail. And that is the last thing that you want after you have created such a beautiful piece of mail and taken the time to put things inside as well. We don't want that to happen. So I like to use the Aliens Clear Gel Tacky Glue. And I just do like a little bead here on these side flaps, like so. I fold up my bottom flap, give it a little squish, and then I like to set it somewhere with something heavy on top of it until it dries. And usually with the 
Aliens Clear Gel Tacky Glue. It doesn't take very long. It dries fairly quickly, but any wet glue will do, okay? What I found is that this just tends to hold much better. Now, if you're a fan of glue sticks, I also like the Avery Permanent Glue Stick and the YooHoo glue sticks as well. They hold. Um, but I just have, you know, a healthy skepticism when it comes to glue sticks. So I'll use this to put some thin papers into my journal or something, but I don't tend to use this on envelopes. I want to make sure that what I'm sending through the mail is going to be super secure. Okay, now if you don't have any fancy envelope making tools, that's not a problem. I'm going to show you how to make one without using any tools except a pair of scissors. So the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on a 12 by 12 as well, but it's going to make the size much larger. Now depending on what size envelope that you want, that may work for you and be totally fine. But what I found is an eight and a half by 11 is a good place to start, especially when you're kind of getting the hang of this. Okay. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fold up one of the long sides here on our eight and a half by 11. Now you don't need to measure, but what you do want to make sure that you do is you, that you line up your sides so that they meet. Okay. I'm just eyeballing this, but I know it's going to end up being about an inch to an inch and a half. I'm just going to fold that down start by creasing it with my fingers and then I'm gonna go back in a few minutes and reinforce all of my folds with the handle of my scissors okay so that's our first one this is going to be the side of our envelope the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other side here and I'm going to lift it up and fold it over to where it almost meets the crease not a hundred percent but almost, so we want it to be kind of right there on the edge, okay? Again, you wanna make sure that your sides match up. Okay, I'm going to fold it down. Okay, so this is going to be the side of your envelope, and then this is going to be basically the body of your envelope. Now what we want to do is we want to fold up the bottom, okay? We want to fold up the bottom here about the same width that we did here on the side. Again, making sure that our sides match up. Now if you have a scoreboard, it's going to make this much, much easier, but again, we want to do this without any tools. All right, so once we've got that folded down, we're going to go back and look at our envelope, okay? This is going to be a top-loading envelope, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this bottom corner. I like to do it at an angle, but before we do that, I'm going to reinforce all of my creases. handle of your scissors works really great for this and also a spoon I have used a spoon in the past but you will need a pair of scissors for this project so in this case you'll have all the tools that you need in one place all right so we're gonna cut off that corner there we're gonna do it at an angle I want an angle on this corner as well because this is going to fold up to, the, to be the bottom of our envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to cut at an angle into those score lines there and then I'm going to cut off this piece here. Now I recommend cutting inside of the score line, not outside. That way you don't have any overhang whenever you go to make your envelope itself. 
And this is, you're probably gonna find that this is not gonna be perfect. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna fold this over. Sometimes this ends up being a little bit too long still. It is okay to go back and trim that up and make it a bit shorter if you like. You just don't wanna make it so short that you can't glue it down here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and cut off just a little bit more just to make it look a bit nicer. And now we have the base of our envelope and we're going to be gluing this down here. And then we'll need to fold it over to close it up. Now, this is our base and this is going to be basically how tall it is or depending on how you look at it. If it's a top loading, this is going to be how tall it is this way. But then you wanna figure out, you know, how tall do you actually want it? So depending on how far you fold this down, will depend the end size of that envelope. Okay, so again, once it's closed here, do we want to cut it off here? Do we want it to go here? Do you want to have a smaller envelope? Do you want it to be long and skinny? It really depends on what type of envelope you're wanting to, to make or even what's going inside it. So if you have, you know, notebook paper, it might be better to have a long skinny envelope. That really depends on you, okay? I want mine to be right about here, okay? So that is where I'm going to make my fold. I'm not gonna make any cuts just yet, but if this is where I want the end size of my envelope to be, that is where I'm going to make a fold. So I'm gonna open all of this up and I'm gonna fold down this top part where I want my envelope to end. going against the grain here so you will probably need to reinforce that crease okay so this is going to end up being my top flap that closes it and we'll trim it down in just a minute but first we need to get rid of this here and we need to get rid of this here we don't need these two pieces so for this top corner here you're going to trim in and remember it's it's better to trim inside the score line and then we're going to trim up. All right, now we're gonna trim it off near the flap. Okay. That's gonna fold over like that and we want to trim off the, this here. And we're going to do this one at a little bit of an angle as well, just like we did these down here. So we're going to cut up, and then we're going to cut off our excess here. Okay, and there you have it. There is your envelope. That's the basic of it, basis of it. Okay, this is going to fold down to close it up. Now, if you wanted to, you could do something really cool, which I'm gonna show you a little bit at the end of the video, where you can do a string closure. You could put a piece here and a piece here and tie them together. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're gonna be sending it through the mail. They don't always make it. But what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna trim it down just a little bit. Now, if you want to, this would be a good time to kind of alter this part of the envelope as well if you'd like to. If you'd like to round it out, if you'd like to use a punch to punch a piece out here so that you can pull things in and out of it really easily, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my two inch circle punch here and I'm just going to kind of center it. Just do a little notch. So when I glue that down, I'll be able to access whatever is in there a lot easier. So now let's trim this down a little bit. I'm going to start by making sure that I have a flap that covers this. So I need to make sure that my flap is, is at least this long. So I'm going to trim off this extra here. I'm going to eyeball it again. Okay. Still is going to cover that. And then I'm just going to kind of trim off a little bit here on the corners cutting these off. You don't have to do this. This is completely optional. Um, 
This would also be a great time if you have a border punch, using a border punch along here would look great, okay? And then once I fold that down, I can then close my envelope later. So let's glue this really quick and put it aside before we do our next one. Remember, I always use wet glue because I want to make sure that it's going to really stay and not come apart in the mail. Okay, there's our envelope and we're going to set that aside. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with a 12 by 12. I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time, and I'm actually gonna be doing all the folds on the opposite side as the pattern piece. Now, this is actually scrapbook paper, not cardstock, but you could do it on cardstock. I find it a lot easier to do with paper. It folds a lot easier um, and just makes the job in general a lot easier. Um, but again, you could do this with cardstock. So I'm going to fold over my side piece. You can start on any side because this is a 12 by 12. All the sides are going to be the same size. I'm going to fold it down. I won't really need my scissors much this time. It's going to fold really nice and easily. I'm going to bring the opposite side over to match it and almost line up with that crease. I'm then going to fold up the bottom here. And then I'm gonna start trimming. I'm gonna cut this corner at an angle. I'm gonna cut off this piece here. And I'm going to cut inside of the score line. All the way to that corner. And then I'm going to cut this piece here at an angle. Okay, now this is pretty large. It's a pretty big envelope. So I'm going to fold this over here to kind of figure out, you know, how big do I really want this to be? I think I'm gonna make it about there. It's gonna end up being around a five by seven. Um, so we're gonna fold it right about here. And open everything up and then fold that down where I want my envelope to end. All right, I'm gonna cut off my extra pieces. Again, at an angle, and then cutting inside that score line. And I'm going to cut this guy off over here. that wasn't too too fast all right and then I'm gonna just kind of round this out a little bit I'm gonna eyeball it but what you could do is you could take a bowl and line it up around here and um, just kind of trace around the edge of it and then cut off what you trace from the edge of the bowl Again, this is not going to be perfect because we are eyeballing it, and that is okay. It is more than okay. All right, and then we've got our flap. Let's trim this up a little bit. I'm gonna trim this down about here. And again, cut off some corners. then we've got our envelope. Now if you really want to wow your pen pal, 
you can send them some sort of funky shape through the mail. Um, these are actually from Dollar Tree. And I got them from the Teaching Tree section. So these were only a dollar a piece and it comes with 36 per pack. So quite a lot of bang for your buck. Um, now keep in mind that these are going to require some extra postage because of their unusual shape. But a lot of times it's only going to require just a little supplemental stamp. Um, or you could always put an extra forever stamp on there if you just really want to make sure that it's going to make it. So to make these it's really quite simple. You're going to take two of your shapes and you're just going to cut one of them in half. And it doesn't matter where you cut it, just as long as you leave enough space so that you can slip something inside. Now we're gonna turn this one over on the back and we're just going to run a bead of glue all the way around the outside. Again, I like to use wet glue to make sure that it really holds Now, because these don't match up if I flip it over this way, so I am going to have to glue them down facing the same direction. I'm just going to line up my shapes here. Okay. We're going to do that for the top piece and the bottom piece. And what it's going to do is it's going to leave this little slit here. Okay. I'm gonna put this one off to one side so that it can dry. So it's going to leave this little slit here. And what that's going to allow you to do is slip in your letter. Now it's not gonna hold a ton, okay? But remember our wow factor is the shape itself. So it's definitely going to hold a few pieces of paper folded over in there. And to secure it, you want to make sure that you use something over the flap. So washi tape should suffice. So I've got a little bit of washi here. and I'm just going to secure it over that flap to make sure whatever I have inside doesn't come out okay I like to put my return address up here you can just put a stamp and then address it on the front Okay. There are lots of different shapes that you can find at Dollar Tree. Again, it's usually in the teaching section and the materials vary. These are just some really thin paper, but they do have a lot of shapes that are a bit more sturdier. Um, I do have some that are books, for example, and they are more of a thin cardboard. So they would definitely hold up better going through the mail. But again, because this is thinner and it's a lot lighter, you're more likely going to use less postage. Now the very last hack that I'm going to show you guys when it comes to mailing your letters before we start decorating is an envelope book. Now what I like to do is go to Dollar Tree and get these little notebooks. They're always a dollar and they come with several sheets. Now this is pretty thick and probably too thick to send through the mail, but what it is is the perfect size and it has lines that run this way just like a book would so this is going to be perfect to make your own envelope book so the first thing I do is I take it apart I open up these staples here and I pull out the pages inside now you don't have to buy one of these notebook paper would work perfectly or just plain printer paper so if you're like me and you write pretty messily though uh, you might need the lines so I like to use these because they have lines and I tend to be pretty messy. So you're gonna take three, maybe four pages, depending on how long of a letter you want to write. You're gonna take those out of your book. Then you're going to take a piece of pattern paper. Now this is a scrap from a 12 by 12, so this is also a really great way to use up your scraps. And you're just going to kind of eyeball to see how big you want it to be. So. It looks like I'm gonna need to cut it down right underneath those pages, so I'm gonna do that now. So 
we're just gonna cut this down and all of these books that you get might be different sizes which is why I'm not actually giving you measurements so it's really best to kind of see what is going to fit best for your envelope book okay so what we're gonna do now is we're going to leave a little bit of room and we want to fold this over so that it's going to cover those pages but not too much and we can always cut it down if we need to but again I'm just eyeballing it there okay I'm gonna fold that over and crease it okay and then anything that I have left over here will fold down now if you want you can just leave it a square and seal it um, you can also cut the edges you know like you would if it was going to be just a regular flap or what I like to do I like to kind of almost fold it here but not really we're gonna crease it right there at the tip and then I'm gonna cut diagonally from there okay and it's going to make an envelope shape okay so I'll fold this over and then I can fold this down okay and then it looks like an envelope now you might be worried kind of about the sides here this is not anything that I would recommend putting extra goodies in I would definitely recommend using it as just a letter itself but you don't need to worry too much about the sides being open as long as you seal it really well all right so I've got my envelope shape now if you have a long arm stapler you can definitely open it up and just staple it in there I don't happen to have one of those so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a bead of glue down the middle here did I just say middle super weird I totally did you, ho you heard it here folks all right so I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna line up those score lines and just glue it right in. Do another thin bead of glue right here in the middle. You really don't need a lot. I'm gonna line that up again with the score lines and the top to the bottom of these pages. And then you're just gonna set that aside to dry and once it does, you'll have your little book here. You can start on this page and write as if you're writing in a journal, which is really great. Just write on it page by page and even decorate it. You'll seal it up here. I recommend putting some sort of temporary adhesive underneath here and then using some washi tape here to really secure it in place and then addressing the front. All right, so the very first decorating tip that I have for you is to create your own pattern paper. If you don't have any, you can take a simple piece of cardstock. And what I'm doing here is I'm using my stamp and some inks to create a tone on tone pattern. And I'm just going to stamp those sunglasses or eyeglasses over and over and over again to create a pattern. Now you'll also notice that I'm doing this before I fold up my envelope. It makes it so much easier to do this before you put it all together and glue it down because if you wait until after you fold it all up and glue it down it's going to make it really bulky in some places and the stamp will not be even. So I'm going to use this envelope a little bit later on in the video but here again, just use your stamps to create a really pretty background. Any stamp will do. All right guys, we're gonna take this to the next level. Instead of creating a pattern this time, I'm actually going to take a few stamps and place them where I'd like to go on the envelope. And remember, you want to do this before you fold and glue your envelope up. We want a really smooth surface to stamp on we want to make sure that our stamps are even. This time I'm actually going to emboss instead of using ink. And then I'm going to use a gold embossing powder. 
Now what's great about this, if you have these supplies, is that for those of you guys out there that are more crafters than people who send pen pal letters or snail mail, this one's for you. I know a lot of you guys like to do layers and you like to have lots of texture in your work and this is a really good happy medium for that. Because you want to keep this as flat as possible and you don't want to add any bulk and you don't want to give the post office any reason to not send your mail, this is a really great way to do it. It gives it a little bit of texture, it raises it up off the paper, and it just looks really cool. So I'm going to heat it up here and you're going to see it's going to slowly solidify and become gold and shiny. Alright, so the next three envelopes are going to use materials that are not traditionally used on snail mail. So the first one there is that frame. That was actually a Project Life card that I cut out, and I cut out the middle, and I'm actually going to address my envelope in that space. But what's really cool about that is it just adds a decorative element around your address that normally you wouldn't have on your envelope. The second thing that I'm going to use is a lot of planner stickers, and we're going to get to those in just a moment. But the third thing that I really want to talk about here are clear stickers. I know a lot of people struggle to use clear stickers, and it can be challenging depending on the paper that you're putting them on. But if you have something that's fairly solid color, like this envelope here, or something that's light in color, clear stickers can actually be your best friend. They look like designs were printed directly on your envelope, which basically means you can customize your envelopes to make them look like they were printed out from a store, which is pretty cool. So I want you to kind of retrain your thinking here and think of clear stickers more like washi tape or washi stickers, because when you use washi tape or washi stickers, what's great about these is that they blend seamlessly into the background. They look like they were just printed there, which I absolutely love. Now the next thing that you're gonna see me use here are border strips. Now typically these are used in your planner just to decorate it or to you know, cover up any empty space or even divide up your days. But what I really like using them for is my return address. I like to stick them on the back of the envelope flap and then just write my address in there. Sometimes I'll use them in layers like I am here and what I also like using are these round seal stickers. Again, they're used as a decorative element in your planner um, or used to even seal up your envelope, but what I like doing is writing my address around the edge in a circle. Makes it look a little different than what you'd normally see in a return address label. But here I'm gonna use a clear sticker for that instead, and I'm just going to stick that on the back of my envelope. It's a perfect place to add my return address. Now, another type of sticker that you'll find in these sticker packs or anything that's a planner sticker pack are these boxes. You'll also find checklists, to-do lists, and you'll see here this one says like today, to-do. These are also really great to use on the front of your envelope to write the address of wherever you're sending your, your letter to. 
What's great about this one is it already has lines. Now it does say today on it, but we're going to cover that up with a few other stickers just to make it interesting and also to create almost a blank space where I could write someone's name in that spot. Now just like on our last envelope, I'm going to use a few different flags or places where you would normally journal and I'm going to add those to the back of my envelope so that I can put my return address on there. Now for this next envelope, I'm actually going to combine two of my favorite things to do on some snail mail, and that's using planner stickers as decorative elements while also using die cuts and addressing my envelope on top of those die cuts. Now here I'm going to use a lot of icon stickers, and I'm actually going to use these to create a pattern to make it look like bubbles or things that are blowing out of the whale. So I'm using those little asterisks there. What I like is that whenever you get planner packs, you have a bunch of these stickers and they usually come in all different kinds of colors. So it's really great to coordinate with whatever project you're working on. As for this whale here, I use my silhouette to cut this out, but you don't actually need a die cutting machine of any kind. What you can actually do is print something like this out from your printer on cardstock and simply cut it out with scissors. Now continuing the theme of using die cut shapes, I'm actually going to use a little die cut shape that I got here of a cloud from Dollar Tree. That's right, Dollar Tree. And again, these come in a pack of 36, so that one cloud itself was just pennies. These other little pieces here are scraps that I had of coordinating paper, and I simply drew out a cloud shape on a piece of paper and cut them out with my scissors. No special tools needed here just your imagination. Now once all this dries, I'm actually going to address my envelope right there on the blue cloud. It is a perfect space to put the address of your recipient. In addition to the die cut shapes, I love getting the vinyl wall decals from Dollar Tree. They're so inexpensive and so adorable and this ice cream has a perfect place for me to address my envelope. Something that I do regularly is actually send coloring pages to my pen pals. I love coloring on one side and then writing a letter on the other and that way they have a piece of artwork and the letter to remember me by. Now this is going to go in a vellum envelope so that you can actually see the artwork from the outside and I'm going to address it on the inside on the paper itself. You don't have to do this, you can actually put some artwork in there and then just address it on the outside of the vellum envelope if your artwork maybe covers the entire span of the envelope or you just want to make sure that it's actually going to get where it's going. I'm going to create a shaker envelope here as well by adding some sequins and shaker bits. This last tag is probably going to require you to use a little bit more postage than you would on a normal envelope because it's going to create a little bit of bulk. We're going to be creating a string closure here and I'm going to punch out two regular size holes and then punch around them with a craft punch. Here I'm using a heart but you can also use a circle. I've even used a star in the past. I'm going to insert some eyelets through those hearts and tie a string around the back of one of them before setting them with my crocodile. 
This part can be a little tricky if you're like me and you have trouble with little tiny things in your fat fingers. I had a really hard time with these eyelids. They were slippery little suckers, but finally I was able to get the string around the eyelet. And I'm going to put the eyelet through the hole on the envelope as well before I set it. It did take a couple of tries to get everything lined up, but once you do this a couple of times, you'll get the hang of it and it'll get a little bit easier. You also want to make sure that for your bottom part here, what I'm placing in now, you don't want to place it so far down that your crocodile can't reach. Now I have seen people do this in the past where they simply glue on the bottom piece to the envelope itself. However, I'd be worried about it not sticking and coming apart in the mail. Once you're done, you're just going to wrap your string around and then you can even set it with some sealing wax to make it stay. Alright guys, now to kind of sum everything up, I'm going to package some Happy Mail so you can kind of see how I do it, and also I'm going to give you some tips as we go. I'm going to reiterate some of the things that we already talked about, and also give you a few new tips that you can use whenever you're sending some Happy Mail. Now, here's one of the envelopes that we made during today's session. But what I really want to show you is how I put everything together. Truth be told, I'm someone who sends more snail mail and pen pal letters than I actually do crafty mail. And whether you're sending crafty mail or you're sending just pen pal letters, postage can really get expensive. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I send in my pen pal letters and my happy mail and how I package it so that it cuts down on the amount of postage and all I need is one stamp. Now I send pen pal letters not only internationally or domestically but internationally frequently. I'm going to show you a couple of different stamps that you can use as well to add on in case you need a bit more postage. So my first tip is always put everything inside of a card. Okay, so I have one here. This is one that uh, is from Target. I didn't actually make it. And I actually cut down the sides so that it would fit in my envelope here. Now normally what I would do is write my pen pal on here. And then inside I would enclose quite a few things for them. So I try to include as many flat things as possible. So I might include a sheet of stickers. I'm also going to include this really big vinyl sticker that is same that is from the same set as this guy here. I'm also going to include some embellishments. Now these are slightly dimensional, but not two dimensional. I like to keep everything nice and flat as possible. I also like to send some tea. Now this can be kind of bulky as well, but you'll see in a minute once we put it all together, it will lay mostly flat. And then washi samples. Okay, I like to fold it all up in my card and then I'm going to put it into my envelope. I'm going to put the fold side down. Okay, now whenever you're sending something like this, you want to make sure that it doesn't get much thicker than that. I don't know if you can see that. I would not recommend sending any kind of paper clips because it will get caught in the machines and they'll have to hand cancel it and most likely they'll either charge you more or they'll send it back to you. So you want to make sure that you don't include anything that they can kind of press here and feel that there's extra bits. This feels like it's just paper inside, like it's a letter that's just been folded. And that's what the card does. The card makes everything nice and smooth and it makes it feel like there's just a letter in there and no one's the wiser, okay? So for this, you can use any of your regular forever stamps. Here's just a few of my favorites. These came out this year, 2019. Okay, and all of these would work on this. I would only need one of these stamps and I'd probably put it right here and then send it off, okay? Now, if you're feeling like, oh, maybe this is getting 
a little bit heavier or it's a little bit thicker than I would like, you can do one of two things. If you think it warrants two stamps, you could either put two forever stamps on there or you could use one of these $1 stamps, which basically counts as two forever stamps. Or if you're pretty sure it's close to the forever stamp, but you're, you know, you just want to be sure, you just want to make sure that you don't get stuck at the post office, you can add one of these additional ounce stamps. And these are fairly cheap, okay? Stick it on there next to your forever stamp. Now this is also something that I would send to a pen pal internationally, I have several of those. And again, I use one stamp. They always make it, I've never had any issues, I've never had any returned, I've never had any really lost in the mail. Now that does happen occasionally, but not due to postage, okay? So keep it nice and flat, wrap it in a card, and you'll notice I've put quite a few things in there. I could even have added several pages of a letter to go in there, okay? So those are my tips for mailing and packaging. All right, well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this session of Crafty Camp. Which one of these do you think you'll be making? Comment below, let me know. Uh, let me know which one was your favorite. I hope you guys go out and create some really awesome flat happy mail and send it to your pen pal and make their day. Enjoy the rest of Crafty Camp. I'll see you guys later.